As far as empires go, you have been as successful as the Mongols, and Bia creating the largest contiguous empire in human history, or slaughtering tens of millions of people, it goes without saying that the Mongol Empire was infamous. However, there is still a lot that most people don't know about this nomadic powerhouse. So today, we're going to be running down the top 10 things you didn't know about the Mongol Empire. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notifications button so that you never miss out on another Top 10s video. Number 10, a large landmass. Put simply, the Mongols were nothing if not capable conquerors. That's because at the empire's greatest extent, it stretched for about 23.6 million square kilometers. This means that it not only encompassed 16% of the world's total landmass and 25% of the world's total population, but held the record for being the largest contiguous empire in human history. To put that into perspective, it stretched from modern-day South Korea in the east to modern-day Poland in the west, and modern-day Russia in the north to modern-day Pakistan in the south. Yet, after reaching this peak in the year 1279, the empire slowly but surely began to decline. Number 9. Master Tacticians While many would have you believe that the Mongol armies were massive, the truth of the matter is that they were often outnumbered by their opponents. That's because rather than rely on a large quantity of soldiers, the Mongols would instead rely on speed and tactics in order to outsmart their enemies. This was made possible due to the fact that nearly their entire army rode on horseback, making their forces almost impossible to outmaneuver. As a result, despite rarely having armies that numbered over 100,000 men, most of the time the Mongols could easily outclass their opponents. Number 8. A Sea Invasion While horses may be of great use on land, they aren't so helpful when you're trying to mount an invasion by sea. Yet, horses are exactly what were used when the Mongols tried to invade Japan twice as they attempted to do so both in 1274 and 1281. Now, the first time was actually somewhat of a success, as it was more of a raid than an actual invasion. That's because mainly using Korean troops, the Mongols took over two small islands between Korea and Japan before springboarding onto the Japanese heartland, where a small Mongol force successfully raided much of the area. Yet, his success likely made the Mongols a tad bit overconfident, as in 1281, they decided to invade Japan with a massive force of about 100,000 soldiers and 900 ships. However, this invasion ended up being a disaster, as due to most of the Mongol ships being sunk in a typhoon, the remaining force was far too weak to win against the Japanese. Number 7. Religious Tolerance Despite the Middle Ages not exactly being known as a time of religious tolerance, the Mongols seem to be way ahead of their time in this regard. That's because despite the fact that the Mongols were Tengrists who worshipped the god Tengri, they realized early on that trying to impose their religion on foreigners would not exactly make them very well liked by those that they conquered. As a result, they openly supported the religions of their subjects, allowing them to practice in peace so long as they did not rebel against the Mongol Empire. In short, this was a win-win situation as it allowed the Mongols to more easily placate those they conquered while still maintaining their power. Number 6. Their Reign While the Mongol Empire certainly was massive at its greatest extent, it wasn't always this way. Now, the Mongol Empire truly began in 1206, when Genghis Khan united the tribes of the Mongolian steep into one empire. From there, him and his sons went on to capture vast swaths of land, with the empire reaching its peak in terms of area in 1279. However, in 1259, the empire already began to fragment into different factions, and by the late 1200s, 
four different Mongol Khans controlled different portions of the empire, leading to them all losing their collective strength due to a lack of cooperation. By 1368, the Chinese branch of the Mongol Empire fell, and by 1687, all traces of the empire had been obliterated. Number 5. The Pa Mongolica While many of you may be familiar with the Pa Romana, which was a period of peace throughout the Roman Empire that lasted for about 200 years, it turns out that the Mongols had their very own version of this event. Known as the Pa Mongolica, it spanned for 100 years between 1250 and 1350, and was a period of time that allowed for lots of trade and commerce to occur due to travel being extremely safe throughout the empire, with this especially being the case on its famous Silk Road. However, once the bubonic plague began to spread in the mid-1300s, its undoing of about a third of China's population and of about half of Europe's population effectively led to the end of the Pa Mongolica. Number 4. The Postal System While most postal services today use trucks, trains, and planes to deliver the mail, the postal system of the Mongolian Empire was a tad bit different. Known as the Yan, it essentially was an extensive system where messengers on horseback would deliver mail, intelligence reports, and important news from station to station, with said stations typically spaced about 25 to 65 kilometers apart the size of this postal service was absolutely massive, with China alone at one point being home to more than 1,400 stations and 50,000 dedicated postal horses. Therefore, it's pretty clear to us that the Mongols were definitely ahead of their time. Number 3. Mongol Weapons Typically, Mongol warriors have been depicted as making use of both curved sabers and long-range bows and arrows to beat back their foes. And while this may be true to an extent, the Mongols also stand apart for being one of the first civilizations to make use of gunpowder. And while the Chinese likely used some gunpowder weapons before them, it is probable that the Mongols used their own against the Chinese, and in particular they took a liking to using throwable gunpowder bombs and grenades against large groups of enemies. Yet despite these weapons undoubtedly being quite effective, many historians believe that these incredible armaments never saw any use outside of China. Number 2. Mongol Woman Although women in the Middle Ages typically had very few rights, if any, in the Mongol Empire, it was the females that often called the shots. That's because while the men were off fighting, the women tended to stay in larger population centers and effectively manage the administration of the empire. Controlling everything from businesses to religion, they really did run the ship and at certain points in time, the Mongol Empire even had a number of female warriors vying for power. As a result, we guess that this just goes to show that despite living about 800 years ago, some women were more empowered in the Middle Ages than they are today. Number 1. The Invasion of India While the Mongol invasion of Japan may have been a massive failure, it is definitely not the only country that the Mongols had a tricky time terrorizing. That's because between the years 1221 and 1327, the Mongol Empire launched several different unsuccessful attacks against the Indian subcontinent. Now, that's not to say that all of the attacks were complete failures. After all, there were several wars in which the Mongols occupied what are today some of India's northernmost provinces. However, despite their ferocity, the Mongols were never able to fully overtake the Indians, as factors such as a lack of knowledge of the terrain and the vast Himalayan mountains made winning a full-out war against them simply impossible. 
That's all we have for you today, everyone, and thank you all for watching. Let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on the Mongol Empire. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notifications button so that you never miss out on another Variety Top video. Until next time.